Oh. Hello, people. I just got done seeing the new uh, GTA 6 trailer and I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Um, not that my opinion should matter, okay? If you are a huge GTA fan, buy GTA, enjoy it, play it, have fun. Um, have fun being bent over and fucked in the arse. Oh, there goes my YouTube monetization. What I mean by that is, GTA 5 came out when the PlayStation 3, when the PlayStation 3 was Sony's flagship uh, model. And, um, yeah. There are kids that go to the local school near where I live that are younger and don't know what a PlayStation 3 is. That's how long it's taken Rockstar to get GTA 6 uh, out, done, speculated, whatever. And like I said, I'm happy for you fans out there of GTA 6, whatever, you know, going back to Miami and, 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 and whatnot and stuff. That's great and all. I've played damn near every Grand Theft Auto. I have Grand Theft Auto 5 on my Steam. I've played it for a whopping, I don't know, 10 hours, if that, of the life of owning Grand Theft Auto 5. I even streamed it a couple of times, it just wasn't for me. I just don't like it. Why would I want to play a simulation of playing someone's fantasy life when my own life needs stuff done? i.e. 3D printers need maintenance, cleaning, things of that nature. My web store needs updated, backdoor protection, etc, etc. My school, I need to go to school, get my things done for my, for my cyber security course. Um, now, I've got too much things going on that I cannot be bothered. I just can't be bothered. I just can't be asked. I just don't care. I don't care. Right? I don't care about Grand Theft Auto 6. I don't care. It's cyber. It's just cyberpunk without the cyberpunk. That's all it is. And let's be honest. All of us are. Most of us are going to ignore the main campaign, where you play. Of course, it has to be an ethnic diverse woman, who's on a revenge campaign. Because this is the thing people don't seem to understand. Does the love come after she gets out of jail, or is she going? Or is she in jail because of the love? Somehow, a man's got to be the bad guy in all of this. This is the one thing you've got to understand. There's always, and it's going to be a white guy. Okay, I've already called this. I'm calling it now. It's going to be a white guy, okay, with the most whitest sounding name like Adam or Jake or Stephen or Paul. Yeah? And she went to jail because she loved the wrong man. Or some silly little shit like that. And so she's on a revenge tour. Where she's just out to get revenge. That's what it's going to be. It's all it's going to be. I've already summed it up. Just from the trailer. And then they show clips of... Of, of horrible... Horrible... Brazilian butt lifted... CGI models. Where the jiggle physics makes me want to vomit... I don't I don't pay for that. I don't even like that in real life. Why would I want that in my game? If I ever see that shit in a video game, I'm shooting him in the face. Just no. 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 No Rockstar. And then they're they're talking about having uh in insider influences. So I can already tell you it's gonna be XQC. It's gonna be all those stupid fucking idiot fucking streamers on Twitch that are, are going to be playing it day one, day of, or the day before. They're going to get pre-release copies or some shit like that from Rockstar. And they're going to play it. And XQC is just going to sit in the corner going, It's trash! 
I can barely understand that fucking idiot's that idiot's fucking voice. Every every time he's in a video, all he does is this. Just speak your your native language. I will find a Google Translate because you trying to speak English is a fucking insult to English. Just no. Or then you're gonna have fucking Pokemon in the back. Behind him, eating her cookies. <laughs> Stupid fucking tart. You can go fuck yourself. And shove your fucking cookies down your throat and up your ass. Yeah, I'm going after fucking Pokemon. Fuck her, I don't care. She's not even that pretty. Listen, bitch, don't come at me from a position where I can ruin your entire fucking career with a baby wipe swipe. All right? L get some inner fucking character. Earn some actual fucking character. I'm not even joking. Earn. Learn. Okay? Don't just, don't just sit there and have all your little fucking pokey simps and your fucking view bots, because we all know you fucking view bot. All right, don't give me that shit. Okay, once you get to a certain point, you are quite literally an Ouroboros. And if you don't know what an Ouroboros is, this is why you need to educate yourself. By the way, an Ouroboros is a snake or a fish or an animal that keeps eating its own tail, i.e. it becomes an inner perfect circle. That is an Ouroboros. That is you. And it's your followers. Because once you get to a certain point, you think to yourself, I can't drop below this. I've got to get my views up. I've got to... Yeah, don't care. Don't care. Don't give a shit. Don't care. Don't care. And you want to know how you can spot streamers that have that have bots in, on their streams? Their chat is... That's all the bots trying to out-text each other. That's all the bot companies trying to actually say, okay, we will text X amount in your chat to make it look like you've got active viewers while we're running a fucking Python script through an API on the back end so it looks like you've actually got viewers and you've actually got the chat. Because it's amazing when she asks something in chat, like, hey, chat, press one in chat. Blah, blah. And like it takes about 45 seconds for the ones to start appearing. Why? Because the chatbots are listening to her say, hey, press F for this, press 1 for that. <laughs> and so you get a little pokey simps who have to donate a minimum of five, ten dollars to her just to get, senpai, notice me. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck right off with that shit. You view bot, and th th there's so many people that fucking view bot. It's not even funny. <laughs> Sorry, that was a text message I was waiting for a friend. And that's another thing. You used to be, she used to collab with how many people? With how many projects? Doing how many things? And now she's all by herself. All by myself. Why? 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 Because she's a fucking terrible person. The shit you see on her streams is not the real Pokemon. The real Pokemon is... Can we strike them down for copyright? Can't strike me down. Because one, I'm not showing a single picture of you. Two, I'm not showing any audio of you. And three, I'm allowed to speak my fucking mind. Because this video is also going up on Rumble. So you can strike it down on YouTube. And I don't give a shit. And you know what? I'll fucking take you to court. Do you understand? I will take you to court. And it will be worse off for you. It'll be worse off for you. Reputation wise, etc, etc. Because you're picking on someone who's got... Five, I, mean, what, I think I've got like 505 subscribers. But yeah, my subscribers are loyal subscribers. They're real people. They comment on my videos. They ask me questions in my live streams. In fact, this started off as a GTA 6 video. 
because I one of my viewers asked me to watch it and give give a, a commentary on it, and this is the commentary, on it. I, and I'm turning it into a coffee time recovery at the same time. So, fuck it, why not? And so, GTA Six, me don't care. Uh, big streamers causing drama. Does it look like I fucking care? Twitch could fucking collapse in and burn. I don't give a shit. I was recently banned on Twitch permanently for saying, and I quote, lit that arsehole up like a cigarette. When it actually I used the British term, which is a colloquial term, which is fag. But all the bot heard was me say the word fag and thought I meant faggot. I.e. a racial, a disc discriminatory term against the LGBTQ community. Guess what, arsehole? I'm part of that community. I am bisexual. I have had boyfriends and girlfriends. I am part of that community. Oh, what you gonna do now? That's my whole fucking point. You don't know, you never learn, you'll never know, you fucking morons, shut the fuck up. Stop getting outraged over something that you're not even related to. Okay? Oh, um, I'm with Black Lives Matter. Sharon? Yeah? You're from Essex, and you're as white as the snow in the North Pole. Why are you mad about Black Lives Matter? Because they need someone to be mad for. You, you're telling me they can't be mad enough for themselves. Plus, by the way, England is the most safest country to be black in. Both statistically and, and economically and everything else, insert here. In fact, England was like the, the ones to first openly and lawfully ban slavery. In fact, we even went to war with other countries because they refused to ban slavery. So Black Lives Matter has no fucking feet here in the UK. They shouldn't even be a thing. And the fact that they are goes to show me that you are all sheeple. You can't fucking think for yourself. And when, when fucking society collapses, when the government says, fuck it, we can't have free health care and open borders because that's not how it works. You can only have one or the other. You can't have both. Hey, you want to know why the, the NHS has become a gluttonous pig that each year it keeps having to have more money shoved into it, shoved into it, shoved into it, shoved into it. Shoved into it, shoved into it. Yeah. Hospitals aren't getting bigger. We're not hiring new doctors or nurses. We're just replacing the doctors and the nurses that quit because they're constantly being used up like 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 agency factory workers. You're just a number. You're not a name. You're not a person. But you want to know why the NHS keeps having to have more and more money poured down its throat? Because more and more fucking illegals keep coming into this country. And they keep taking out of a pot that they haven't put in. So this is what you do. You tell the British Navy, shoot the fucking boats on sight and let them drown. Eventually, the people on the other side of the on the other side of that country, you know, France, will get the hint that it's not safe to cross. So they won't cross. And then France will have the ability to fucking start deportating them like they're doing now. That France is trying. See, at first, I was pissed at France because it seemed like France wasn't trying. But that's because their hands were tied by the EU. Guess what? Their hands aren't tied by the EU anymore. They said, fuck you, the EU, because they're sick and tired of, of, of France, downtown Paris and whatnot. Major, major holiday, holiday and, and tourist attractions looking like a ghetto. So they're going, sweep, yay! High time we followed the French, and that's weird for an English person to say. We need to scoop these fuckers up and yeet them either back into the ocean and watch them drown and then send the video to France and have them put it on the telly 24-7 to tell them, you try, you die. And the fuckers that are here illegally, round the fuckers up, do a fucking DNA test to find out what area of the country, of the world they're from and then send them back there because guaranteed the first thing they do is they destroy any documents any passports any this any that 
Okay, fine, fair enough. So, we will pick a country for you. And we're picking either Gaza, where you can live for about, I don't know, five minutes. Or the Ukraine, where you can live for about, oh, I don't know, five minutes. Or you can tell us what country you're from, and we will send you there. And then once that's all done, once they're all fucking sorted out and everything else, the government needs to stop needs to stop tax and spend, tax and spend, tax and spend, tax and spend, tax and spend. That's all governments know how to do. Governments do not know how to govern. This is why they have spy programs. This is why they have a surveillance state. This is why they have Big Brother. And I'm not joking. You ask a policeman, what are the nine laws of Pell's policing? They'll look at you like, uh, I don't know. Because they're all fucking clueless morons. The late 90s, early 2000s was when the British police stopped being police and started being fucking government stooges. Okay? In the US, Tim Car Tim Tim Paul from Tim Cast IRL points out that if they hire illegal immigrants to be US soldiers, what is stopping a rogue general from taking those those soldiers who have no emotional attachment to, to the US, no no care about what happens to the US citizens from rounding every US citizen up and putting them in the concentration camps. And and various and he went to some very large degree. But the point is the premise is there. Well, okay, what's stopping what is stopping the British police from doing that? Because guess what? We're a Christian country. Do you understand that police? Christian country. And yet for some reason it's okay for a million Muslims to do a prayer call. In the middle of Tower Bridge. Yet if a man or a woman. Pri privately. Prays in their head. They're not saying anything out loud. They're not giving out any outward signals. They're just sitting there with their eyes closed. For about 10-15 seconds. You arrest them. You're arresting the wrong people. You fucking retards. I said what I said, it is what it is. And I mean it every time. Uh, and, and, and if this happens within eyesight of me, I will probably be in handcuffs. Because the moment I see a copper arresting someone who hasn't done anything deserving to be arrested, okay, i.e. if someone starts doing a Muslim prayer to call, I will tell them to stand up, you're in a Christian country, you convert to Catholicism, or you leave your fucking third world shit back in the third world where we throw you. End of. When you move to another country, you acclimate to that country. You don't tell that country to bend to your will. Guess what? You left your third world shithole for a reason. Stop trying to turn the western world into your third world shithole. Keep that up. We will send you back to your third world shithole. We've already stripped Shamalama Bing Bong of her fucking British citizenship. She's now living in Pakistan. Why can't we do that to more people? You've set a legal precedence. So fucking do it. Do it. You're an illegal. This has been convicted of rape or whatever. Guess what? Stripped, stripped, stripped. Off you go. You ain't going to prison. You ain't costing us more money. No more fucking court appeals. No more not. And any fucking barrister, and I mean this, any of you wig wearing fucks, open your fucking yap about they have a legal right to be here. You're fucking following them. Because you won't represent them when they actually commit the crime, will you? But you'll represent them so that they can stay. But you want to hold no accountability for that person's actions. Guess what? That's not how that works. See, in other countries that have a good immigration policy, i.e. America, when you get a, when you get someone that says, yes, I will, uh, I will sponsor this person, i.e. you're sponsoring their citizenship, you're now, they're now legally responsible for that person. They're saying this person is a moral, good-coded person. It just need need they need uh, like you know, 
six months to a year to acclimate to the US to understand our currency, to understand our laws, to understand and just basic stuff. But if you break that law, you're going to jail and the person who sponsored you is going to jail with you. This is why it's really hard to get con- to get corporations or businesses to issue sponsorship visas. Because there's a lot, they're putting a lot on the line for one person. We need to do the same with immigration barristers. You want to represent someone? Well, the moment they fuck up, and they will fuck up. The moment they fuck up, you get banged up with them. You get the same shitty legal defense. You can't defend yourself. You get the same shitty fucking legal defense. And whatever they get, you get. They get 16 months, you get 16 months. They get two years, you get two years. They get deported, you get deported. That's how that's going to work. Common fucking sense. So one thing we don't have anymore. Same as the fact that we've got gas, coal, oil, steel. Do we touch any of those? No, we import the majority of that anymore. Why? Same as trade schools. Why is there no trade schools? Decent trade schools. We've got no mechanics trade schools. We've got these little academies. And stop calling everything an academy, okay? It's a secondary school, not a fucking academy. Okay? It's a secondary school. I went to Woolworth Secondary School, not Woolworth Academy. Stop this shit. We're not America. We don't have academies. It's not fucking Police Academy. It's not fucking Police Academy. Right? Stop that shit. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. We are not America. We are not the fucking 52nd state or whatever it is. The 51st state. Whatever. We're not. We are England. We do it. Do things our own way. Okay? End of. And this is going to seem a little bit controversial. I want my fucking guns back. I have no faith in the police. I have no faith in any kind of so in any kind of social service or program. I'm supposed to have two therapists. Um, uh, at one point, I was supposed to have two therapists, but both therapists turned around and said to me, "We can't handle you. We we're not trained to handle the, the level of head injury and PTSD and stuff that you've suffered, Mister Monaghan." So, sorry. I'm now still waiting from that two-week call. I'm now still waiting for the MOD to send me a therapist. So I've got to, I've got to suffer two weeks plus. Now, going on two weeks plus. But it's okay for them to just send me boxes full of fucking medication to try and chill me out and mellow me out. And this is me on medication, by the way. This is how I fucking feel. This is the level of passion that I have for what this country has turned into by spineless fucking cunts in suits that go to Westminster and think they know stuff. You know nothing because you've never worked a day in your fucking lives. You never worked a job site. You never had to go get go get unemployment. You've never had to go on go on the dole. You've never had to fucking follow the marching orders of about 50 fucking people and if you get one thing wrong all your money's gone and then you gotta wait another fucking five six seven eight weeks you've never had that dangling over your fucking head you've never worked your fingers to the bone at the point where there's calluses and literally from here to here you can even fucking see them guaranteed you look at a politician's hands smooth as a baby's bottom because the only thing they're used to doing is going, give me your money, give me your money, give me your money, give me your money. You're a fucking fat waste of space. I genuinely think Guy Fawkes had it right. Blow the fuck up out of Parliament. Again, guys, from a reference from Guy, Guy Fawkes, I personally don't think that, that, that Westminster needs to be blown up. I don't. Okay? Let me make it abundantly clear. I don't. I just think every politician inside there needs to be fired and held accountable for the, the shortcomings in every single department that they legally represent. And by the way, Rishi Sunak is not Prime Minister. No one voted for him. He has carded his way all the way to number 10. That's it. No one voted for him. If they, literally, if they did a, a, a general election right now, no one would vote for him. No one. 
Not even people in his own cabinet would vote for him. Oh, you just hate him because he's he's of Indian descent. No, I don't. I don't. I don't hate him. I don't know the man to hate him. This is the thing. I don't know the man to hate him. What I do know is what's public about the man, which is he married into money. He's a pencil pusher, moron that that that, that fucked up the economy during COVID and has now somehow become prime minister because apparently Boris Johnson went to a party and that's a no no whatever don't care i don't fucking care all right i don't care i've already got beef with matt matt hancock don't even fucking get me started all right that man that fucking man killed my grandmother all right my nan was forced to take the COVID jabs when she didn't want them. And f literally right after she took them, she just felt worse and worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where she even told her grandkids, her great grandkids and her great great grandkids, stay at the door and just look through the window. I don't want to get you sick. I don't want to pass on what I've got or whatever in it. The last two years of my nan's life could have been completely different from what they was. My younger brother, he's dealing with cancer right now. That could have been diagnosed way sooner than it was. <laughs> he's got surgery on the 20th, Christmas. He's going to be spending Christmas in the hospital. That's my baby brother. I have bled for that man. And I'm not joking. I've had stitches and staples because of that man. That's my baby brother. We had a pact. The only ones allowed to take each other out is each other. He takes me out or I take him out. That's it. No one else. Nothing else. Story time. Went to a uh, secondary school called Hatcham Wood. It's gone now. They, they shut it down. Why? I'm about to tell you why. It was run by an idiot who didn't know how to run a school. The teachers were so corrupt that they were shagging the students. And in fact, I believe in my year when I was there, I think it was four or five girls under the age of 15 got pregnant. By the same teacher? Yeah. Who I believe is still teaching. Oh, now he's retired. But at the time, he was still teaching. And my younger brother got involved with a gang called the Triads. And yes, I'm talking about the Thailand Triads. Not, 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 not the, basically the Philippine Triads, the real Triads. You got the Trinidadian triads. That, that's different. That's like a offshoot of the Jamaican gangs. But point is, he got involved with them, and a deal went sideways. And one day, my brother's walking through the open playground to get into the main building, and he gets surrounded by a whole bunch of people. It literally looked like a Bruce Lee movie. I was expecting to hear it, see Bruce Lee at any second. Ah! It was insane, and they all started pulling out tools. And I'm not talking about a fucking rolling pin. And so the first thing I said to him was, move. They made space for me. I walked out there. I walked, stood right next to my brother. I turned around and I went back to back, boy, come on. And me and my brother stood there back to back, surrounded by about fucking 30, 40, 50 kids with, with machetes and knives and fucking brass knuckles and Christ knows what else. And there's me and my brother. Bare knuckled. I walked away with a couple of stitches, two staples, a head injury, two broken knuckles, uh, fucked up cheekbone. Oh yeah, I bled for my brother. I fought with my brother. I fought for my brother. And I will keep fighting for my brother. And if it turns out I can give him bone marrow or whatever, I will. I'll go through that. Why? That's my brother. That's my sibling. Can you say the same? Can you look at your sibling? 
right in the face and say, I will give you a kidney, I will give you whatever you need, because you're my sibling and I want to see you stay in the world. But that's me. And it got so bad, the fighting got so bad with me and my brother and this people in this school, because we would go from one gang to another 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 gang, because my brother would not stay out of trouble, and I kept pulling his ass out of the fire. And then one day, my brother comes into my bedroom, and he puts something on top of my TED, turns around and walks out, and I'm like, what the fuck is it? Walked up to it, it was a 9 millimeter bullet with his name on it. He had fucked up that bad. And I said to him, so what are you going to do? He said, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? He said, we? I'm like, yeah, we. What are we going to do? Because you're not in this alone. Needless to say, I spoke to two of my uncles. We got some tools ourselves. And... <laughs> I'm laughing now because if I don't, I'll cry. I remember it. My mum dropped us off in a shitty, horrible, horrible neon, neon orange uh, 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 Volvo 240 hatchback. We got out. My mum didn't pull away. We thought our mum had pulled away, but she hadn't. She'd sat there. And out of nowhere, this of Asian descent, so I'm going to say person, come out of nowhere and tried putting his firearm up against my brother's head and I come out of nowhere and I grabbed it and I smacked him in the head with it and I took it and I emptied it and I threw it and I said to him why don't you fight my brother like a man and out of nowhere they just come out like fight it was a reverse like you know when you turn a light on and cockroaches scatter this was a reverse they were just coming out like fucking Agent Smith from the Matrix they were just coming out from everywhere and I was like oh so it's going to be like that huh and so, me, again, me and my brother walked, walked up back to back and out of nowhere we heard this large bang. And the first thing I did was like, fuck, I'm hit, you know, kind of thing. And I was like, you all right? And he's like, I'm all right. And then everyone stopped, turned around, and there's my mum. Mum's like, boys, get in the car. We are like, all right. So we picked up our bags, got in the car, we never went back to that school. And then... That was in 1993, 93, and um, I believe in 99 the school got shut down. They invented the, the the police investigated social services, a big investigation. They just shut the school down, changed hands, went through like so many different people. Even turned went to, turned into a private school for a while. St Still got shut down. It was that bad. The building, the, the, the whole school building, whatnot, could not shake off the uh, namesake. And so they got shut down. And then for a year and a half, me and my brother went from secondary school to secondary school to secondary school. To, and we couldn't, we was there for maybe a week, two weeks. It got to the point where we told the teachers, don't even bother to learn our names. And she was like, why? And it goes, because... That guy, that person, that person, that person, and that girl was in our previous school, and I've got beef with all of them, and if that bitch looks at me sideways again, I'm going to throw this chair into her face. I don't give a fuck if it's a girl or not. She looks at me like a man, she kisses her teeth at me like a man, I'm going to beat her like a man. And I did. I picked up a chair and I threw it in her face. And I walked over there and just fucking nailed her. I, I do not have qualms hit, hitting a woman. She, she, she... She pairs up against me. I will knock you the fuck out. I do not have a qualm with that. I will beat you like a fucking Cherokee drum. End of. It'll be like fucking rock and sock and robots, but only one robot's fighting. If you know what I mean. And even my sister, my youngest of my older sisters, I've got three older sisters. So the youngest of my older sisters went to the same school. She. Through the grapevine, heard that I got into a bit of an altercation in my assembly class. I should tell you how bad it was. I didn't even make it to my first lesson. She comes running in, kicks to the right and goes, Who the fuck is fighting with my brother? I'm like, dealt with it. And she looks over and she's just going, her face is fucking... Oh God, it looked like a fucking rugby ball. 
her face was swollen, there's people fucking uh, call an ambulance for her, oh, you're a fucking mug. My sister literally just claws this guy right down his face. He's screaming because he's got fucking claret coming out of his face. Any face injury that you see in a movie, they do not simulate it correctly. The reason why is because the head gets most blood pumped to it. Therefore, a single nick will literally just gush fucking blood like it's an old 70s chop socky samurai movie. Why? Because literally, there's a lot of blood pressure inside your head. Ask any doctor, they'll tell you. Even a little nick is going to go, is just going to keep coming out. Okay. Well, this kid's face just opened up like a fucking flower. You know? He's on the floor screaming. Teacher gets in the way, grabs my sister. My sister dump, knuckles up and goes, whang, punches her right in the fucking throat. Then my sister fucking hip froze her because my sister's a fucking black belt in judo. No joke. My sister actually went and represented England in the Olympics and got bronze. Okay? My sister knows what she's doing. She's fucking lethal. And... I'll always be proud of my sister for that. And so she starts fucking throwing people around like they're fucking rag dolls. My sister was Gina Carano before Gina Carano, if you know what I mean. And she was fucking people up. And anyone that tried getting involved, I'm now getting involved. I saw this one kid try to fucking kick my sister. So I grabbed him by his fucking bollocks and the scruff of his fucking neck. And I squeezed and I picked him. And I fucking like WWE fucking like reversed, fucking backdropped him onto a table, he fucking, he fucking dislocated his fucking neck. Not a full break, just full on, just dislocated his neck and he was just laying there going, like a fucking monk, it was hilarious. And eventually fucking police get called, me and my sister and my younger brother are all sitting there in the, in the headmaster's office and he was like, get out all three of you. You're permanently suspended. We were like, all right, cool. Can we get in writing please? So we did, went home, mum's like, another fucking school? Yup. Showed, showed her the letter, showed her the letter. Even my sister was like, and we, me, it's the only time me and my sister were sitting there talking for about a good two hours about what happened. She's like, oh yeah, did you see the bit where I fucking clawed that cunt? And then you, you fucking come up and you come on, you fucking like shoved your hand right up that guy's arsehole. You basically turned him into a fucking puppet. I'm like, <laughs> you can understand why I ended up joining the army. Uh, and why some of my favourite pastimes is boxing. I'm not joking, I've got a duffel bag over there full of boxing equipment because I go to my local Irish gym. <laughs> because I am Irish, I, I go to the Irish gym, they welcome me. I speak Gaelic, so, so it's all good. <laughs> and, you know, oh God, good times, good times. Being my little brother, he's sick. And uh, even the doctor said if they'd have got to him, got him screened sooner, they would have caught it sooner and it wouldn't be as bad as it is. And I worry about my younger brother because he's only got like a 37, 38% chance he's gonna make it. So yeah, so Christmas might be a shit fucking year. This might be a shit fucking year for me. And I don't even want to think about it. So if anything you can take away from this story, if you have a sibling, younger or older, reach out to them. I don't care how much bad blood there is between you. Reach out. Reach out. And again, I can't take my own advice because I don't talk to any of my siblings. Uh, not on a daily basis. Uh, maybe monthly, bi-monthly. I'll send a text message, not you still alive? Yep, yeah, right, cool. That's it. Um, and again, I, I, I'm not going to get into why, but I just don't talk to any most of my siblings. I don't even talk to pretty much most of my family. I'm the, I'm the outcast because I moved to America. Therefore, I, I'm the outcast because I, I don't think a certain I don't think a certain way about certain things. I'm an outcast. I'm going to shave my head later today. So you can see me bald in the next video, in the next live stream, so, yay. Well guys, coffee's done. So, that means video's done. 
See you in the next one. Ciao. Oh, and uh, to summarize, don't care about Grotto 36. I'm not even going to buy it. Don't care.